guys, Kim Dondremont here, Cooking with Kim D. So tonight I am making um, sous vide egg bites in our silicone egg bite mold inside of our multi cooker. Um, the silicone egg bite mold can be used inside of our quick cooker, excuse me, our multi cooker. It can be used in our now retired quick cooker. You can use it in the deluxe air fryer. You can use it in the oven. Um, you can use it in the microwave. They are, it is freezer safe and it is also dishwasher safe. Um, so lots of great uses for this, such as these egg bites that I'm making. Um, you can also do hot cocoa bombs. You could do infused ice cubes. These are about a two and a half ounce um, well. So if you put some water in there and then put some like maybe some berries and some mint or whatnot um, inside of like a cocktail. And this is beeping at me because I need to add this soon. Um, so you could make, you know, infused ice cubes, just drop one inside of a cocktail. You could do cheesecake bites in here, all sorts of things. I am doing kind of a play on a Greek egg, um, egg bite tonight. And egg bites are those things that everybody, you know, a lot of these fancy coffee shops are selling now and they don't, they're not really cheap. So this is a super cheap way of making that and you can freeze them, just make a whole bunch of them, which is what I'm doing. I'm going to pop these all in the fridge. Everybody's got breakfast for the week. Um, I'm going to do them on our sous vide function, which sous vide cooking is basically, I have some water that was preheated up in here, about seven cups of water. Um, and it's basically a water bath and that's what cooks it. It is a longer cook time, but it just makes everything, um, you know, meats come out really tender. You do them inside like a sealed bag. Um, so I'm going to try the sous vide way of cooking, and then I'm going to do them on the egg function and kind of tell you guys what I think about each. So again, I've got my six eggs, my third cup of cottage cheese and a little bit of salt that I mixed up inside of one of my stainless steel bowl mixing bowls with a whisk. I've got my next set here, um, batch ready to go. I'm going to do a ham and cheese one next. Um, and then, so divided that in there. I also added some Greek seasoning to it. And then I also needed a third cup of whatever I want for a filling. So I did a little bit of spinach, some parsley, some black olives, some red pepper and broccoli and feta cheese. So I already started distributing them because I wasn't quite sure how much I needed. So I'm just kind of going around and filling them up evenly. Getting all my mixture in there and you don't want these. So I filled the liquids up. It says not to go past about two thirds of the volume. And then I'm just going around, kind of divvying this up. I need to figure out, is it one tablespoon? Is it a tablespoon and a half so that this is easier next time? Um, then after you have all your fillings evenly distributed, you're just gonna take your fork and kind of get your filling down past the egg mixture. All right. And then I'm gonna take my cover I'm going to put my cover on top, just make sure that is down on all sides. I think that feels good. I'm going to open my quick cooker up. Now, one of the things I do love about this um, quick cooker is we now have a spot to hold our lid. You just have to put it down on the on the countertop and there's a lot of liquid, you know, all the steam comes up, there's a lot of water there. Um, so I do love this new feature. All right, so this is going down into my water bath. And the I will make sure I post a recipe for this and it gives the instructions on what I had to do to bring this up to temp. Now, one of the downsides of sous vide is that, like I said, it does take a little bit longer. It took about a half hour for this to come up to up to temp so that's why I'm doing this video to kind of tell you what the difference is in the quality of cooking it on sous vide versus um, in the quick cooker on the egg function so now I am just gonna press this and it has started so I'm gonna pause the video I will come back when I'm taking them out I'll show you guys how easily they come out of the mold and then um, I'll go on to make them the quick cooker style um, the pressure cooker style um, on the egg function. So I will be back in a little while. 
All right, so our sous vide egg bites um, just beeped, so these are ready to go. So let's take off the lid and see how we did. All right, put that up here. And then I'm gonna use my little silicone mitts here to take these out of the water bath. Hi, baby girl. All right, and oops, you're not even not even in the camera. All right, let's slide this over. Let's take off the lid. They look so perfect. All right, so it says to run a knife around the edges of them just so they help release them a little bit. And I'm gonna use our cake tester and releaser because this is um, so. Um, this is plastic, so it's not going to um, ruin the silicone. So I'm just kind of going around, kind of give them a little release. Oh, they smell so good. I can smell the feta cheese and the olives. There we go. Sorry, this is taking so long, but I wanted you guys to be able to see it right out of the pan. Although I am curious if I didn't run it, if it would come out just as easily. But, all right. So I'm gonna take my cutting board here. Let's see if I can do this. Flip it over. They're perfect. Oh, one didn't come out. Give that a little push. And look at how beautiful those little egg bites are. Oh, they're so cute. I'm so excited. All right, so this is the sous vide egg recipe. Now I am gonna fill up, like I said, I've got my egg mixture here with my cottage cheese, my eggs, a little bit of salt and pepper. I've got my ham and cheese and a little bit of green onion that I cut up. I'm gonna fill those up and now I am gonna cook them on the egg function for 14 minutes. So let me get those in and then I'll show you guys afterwards and I'm gonna cut them open and do a little taste test for you. I'll be back. Hey guys, so I just filled these up with my egg mixture. Now, one thing that I didn't do, read your directions, number one rule in following a recipe and I didn't do it. Um, it actually only calls for four eggs and a quarter cup of cottage cheese. So I just had to take a little bit of the eggs because um, I'd already filled it up. Um, so I just took a little bit of the egg mixture out and I've got them, um, I've got about this much space left because I think the pressure cooking, my guess is the pressure cooking is going to puff these a little bit more. So I'm guessing that's why um, you decrease the amount of egg mixture that you're gonna use in it. So I'm putting these back in here. I still have my water bath in here. Put my lid on. Again, okay. Now I am going to set this, whoops. I'm gonna set this on the egg function and these are gonna cook for, so now I'm gonna hit there to get my time. I'm gonna cook these for 14 minutes. And I'll be back, see you in a little bit. Hey guys, so the time is up on the second batch of egg bites, which I did using the pressure cooker function, um, and I used the egg setting for 14 minutes. So the this multi-cooker, the steam release button is down here. If you have a quick cooker, your steam release button will be up top. So all you do is press this, and it is now releasing all of the pressure that was in there. A um, couple more things about the multi-cooker. One of the reasons I love this product is, first of all, you can get your meal on the table so much quicker than cooking um, like a stew or a soup or, or a roast or whatever it is that you're cooking in here in a fraction of the time, um, which is awesome. And cleanup is such a breeze. So while this was cooking, and my little button just popped down so there, it's ready to open. Um, but while this was cooking, I cleaned up everything else so I have very little to pick up um, once I eat and then the inside stainless steel bowl is super easy to clean. It's dishwasher safe and just another reason why I love 
um, the multi cooker. All right, so this is coming off. And I am just going to put this right in the sink for now. Because I'm going to have to wash that off anyway. Got my little silicone mitts. Let's get this out of the water. And you always need water inside of um, the multi cooker. That is what, at least a cup of water, because that is what helps build up the pressure. All right, so we're going to open this up. All right, these look good too. Now, I'm curious. Remember how I took my cake tester and releaser and ran it around? I'm going to try doing it without because I'm just kind of curious and I want us to all see what it will look like um, without using that and if they come out correctly. All right, so let's take the cutting board, flip it over, give them a little shimmy shake, boom. Perfect. I didn't even need to run it around because I used my silicone, chef silicone brush to brush a little bit of oil on it and they came out perfect. All right, so a couple things I'm noticing. Um, so this is our pressure cooker, um, pressure cooker, egg function, 14 minutes. This is the sous vide, which took an hour and a half. So right there alone, I think I'd probably go for the 14 minute pressure cooker on the egg function, but I want to taste them and see what the texture is like. So, I've got a plate here. So this is my sous vide, and this is my pressure cooker. So there's what they look like. Cut into them. Oh, really nice tech, really nice texture on that. That's the sous vide. And then this is the pressure cook. Now let's see how they taste. Mmm. This is the sous vide one. The texture is so creamy. Oh wow, these are really good. These are excellent. All right, now let's try. This one might be a little hot, but I'm going to try it anyways. And this is our pressure cooker on the egg function. Still really good, but the texture on this sous vide one is amazing. Um, wow, I love the texture on this one. This one's a little bit more, um, I don't want to say tough, but this one is just so creamy and smooth. And this one definitely has more of an egg texture to it. Um, both great options, but I work from home, so it's very easy for me to throw something in this um, during the day and just like kind of set it and forget it. And when I, when I hear a beep, I can come over and get it. Um, but if you have the quick cooker, no fear, the egg bites come out great on the pressure cooker um, function as well. So that is our, where'd it go? Our silicone egg bite um, pan or mold, excuse me. And it comes with the, you know, the little carrier to put it in and out, the little cover. Um, yeah, I am very glad that they came out with this. If you're an egg fan and want to try to, you know, eat a healthy protein packed breakfast, these are a great option. Um, these will pop in the freezer. You can pop them in the freezer. I like to put my stuff, when I'm freezing things, I like to take one of my sheet pans, which I will grab. I like to grab one of our sheet pans and like when I do my strawberries and everything and my fruit for my smoothies, I like to buy fresh fruit, um, wash it off and freeze it. I know I could buy frozen, but I just feel like it's um, handled less. And um, a lot of times I might buy organic products too. But what I'll do is I'll wash everything off. I put them down in a single layer, pop them in the freezer for about 15 minutes and it flash freezes them. And then I can throw them in a bag, um, one of our reusable bags. Um, and then I've got, you know, nice frozen strawberries for my smoothies. So with these, you could pop all of these on here. I would flash freeze them for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then you can pop them inside a bag to be able to take one out at a time. If you just put these all in a bag and freeze it, they're all going to stick together. So flash freeze your products before um, you put them into a sealed bag. Um, and then like the night before, take a couple out, 
put them in your refrigerator, let them thaw, and then just pop them in the microwave for a couple of minutes in the morning for a quick and easy breakfast. So there you have it, guys. Happy cooking.